Hey everybody, today we are talking about questions you should ask yourself before moving into an RV. This, I think, could be one of our most important videos ever. I have written a blog about this subject. Sabrina and I have done a live presentation about this subject. I think for a lot of people, it's a very romantic idea to hop into an RV and, <laughs> and travel. I, I really do. But uh, I think there's questions that you should be asking yourselves before you move into an RV and do this full time. It's exciting. We've enjoyed it for the last two and a half years, but it can be challenging as well. But I think by having a good roadmap or idea of what you're about to get yourself into will be very helpful. So the first question probably seems like a, a no brainer in a sense. But the first question is why do you wanna be living in an RV? What, what are the goals? What are you trying to change in your life that you think an RV lifestyle will help with. So for Sabrina and I, the reason that we wanted to move into an RV is, I'll, I'll let you answer. We wanted to spend more time together. I laugh because sometimes I always say, oh, we wanted to travel more. And he's the one that usually says we wanted to spend more time together. And then I feel really bad. <laughs> well, I say that because we were already traveling a lot. Sabrina was traveling for work full time. Moving into an RV allowed us to spend that time together. Originally, we were thinking, well, maybe we could travel together from hotel to hotel because that's what she was doing. She was just living in hotels uh, while working and traveling. So when we found out on YouTube that there's people out there living in an RV, we're like, well, maybe maybe this is something that we could do. I owned a small business in the town that we lived in. I mean, it was a huge adjustment. I had to sell my business, figure out what I was going to do on the road and, and put this plan into motion. I think that you really need to think about why are you doing this? There could be a reason that you think you want to do this, but you don't actually need the RV or the RV lifestyle to do this. And there may be another way that would work better for you. Yeah. Our second question is, do you bend or do you break? And this is a great question for us because I am very flexible. I feel like I'm very flexible. <laughs> uh, I am very good at handling things that happen and, you know, take, you know, taking a step back, looking at the situation and being able to adjust to it. Sabrina, not so much. I more, I, my personality is more, I like things a certain way. And when they don't go that way, I get very up in arms about it because I think when I plan something, this is the way I want it to happen. This is the way it should happen. And when it doesn't, it completely throws me off. And I'm pretty unimpressed when it happens that way. And then I look over at him and he's still smiling and it's no problem. So what? We needed air in the tires. So what? This happened. And it's not a huge deal for him. And so I think we kind of balance each other in that way. He helps keep me a little sane in that way. So, yeah. I would definitely say if uh, somebody, if you're doing this with, with a partner, one of you has <laughs> to be low-key enough to handle when the RV breaks down, when, the, when you can't find a campground, when you're driving all night and you're looking for a place to stay and everything is full. Um, you you got to be able to just be like, all right, this is just... This is, is this is, is what it is. So I'm not that way. Something will happen, say, like when somebody accidentally hit our RV. And my thought is already, where are we supposed to be in a couple days? How are we going to get this repaired? Who do we call for this? What happens if I can't get to my job in a week and a half? Like my brain from just a small hit between the time it takes me to get out of the RV to go look at the damage is already planning for the next three to five to seven to 14 days of what kind of things, what kind of repercussions come from this? Kenny is not like that. And it won't work like that in Europe. <laughs> you can't plan that far in advance. Things are constantly changing. Uh, weather conditions, RV conditions, your own personal conditions, health conditions. It just, yeah, you got to be able to make little minor adjustments almost every day. And I'll say that if you are traveling as much as we do, we move 30,000 miles a year in our RV. That is a lot of miles for somebody in an RV. If your style is going to be moving twice a year, there is almost no difference between living in a small apartment or living in your RV hooked up to a campground. Everything is the same. Mm -hmm. there, there, there is almost no adjustment at all, I, I don't feel like. No, I agree. The adjustment comes from the traveling part of it. We're moving every five to seven days, 30,000 miles a year. That's a lot of wear and tear. That's a lot of times. <laughs> to be on the road for things to go wrong. Being able to make those little micro adjustments on the fly is really going to go a long way uh, for your relationship and for your level of enjoyment on the road. And obviously it's not that you can't do it if you have a personality like mine, 
but you do have to learn to kind of loosen up a little, which is easier said than done. Okay, so the next question is, how are you with downsizing and living small? So we went from an apartment that had about 14, 1500 square feet into an RV that has 150 or so square feet. So there's a lot of things that go into getting rid of your possessions, whether that be selling them, donating them. Are you going to leave them with family? Are you going to store things in case this doesn't work out? And there's a lot of things that go into planning for that. So that's the question is, are you okay with living small and giving up some of the things that you have in your sticks and bricks house? There's a, a different layer to that. So Sabrina and I, we actually got rid of everything we owned. So everything we own is in our RV. We don't have storage. We don't have friends holding on to things. We don't have family holding on to things. We don't have a safety deposit box. Everything we own fits in our 30-foot RV and our car. And uh, for some, that's really scary. But And you can, you know, if, if you're unsure of the commitment level, maybe, yeah. you can have friends hold on to items for you. Or you can put these things in storage. Even if you do that, you will not physically have them with you and you are still letting go of those items. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. I remember when Sabrina and I were downsizing, it took several times. So, you know, we went through, we would do one room at a time in our apartment. We'd hit a closet, we'd hit a bedroom, we'd hit a living room, kitchen, you know, whatever it is, pantry. <laughs> and we would get it down, downsize that room, that area as much as possible. But it wouldn't be, be enough. No. And then we'd move to another room and another room and another room and then go back for a second wave. It took several waves yes. before we actually got rid of no, enough to be able to fit everything in the RV. And then we were like, how come we have all this stuff? Like stuff we were getting rid of, stuff that we may have gotten rid of six months ago. We didn't even remember what they were. We didn't even remember what used to be in this place in the apartment, but it was gone and we didn't need it. I will say I don't miss anything that we got rid of. No, I don't either. There's nothing I that... I can't even remember most of the you, stuff we got rid of. Over time, you forget what you even... For us, anyway, over time, we've forgotten what we've even held on to. But that could be, for some people, knickknacks and thing, items that... Or if they're crafters or if they have a specific hobby that requires equipment, whether they're musicians or... Tools. Uh, some people are very attached to their tools, even. Yeah. So it, it can be almost anything. You know, photos and things like that. Uh, we were able to digitize and put it in the clouds and, and back up hard drives and things like that. So, But there are items that you will look at and be like, I just cannot get rid of it. And it might not fit in an RV. <laughs> <laughs> Question four is a, a huge one that everybody should be taking very, very seriously. People a lot of times, I think, associate RV living with cheap living. And it is absolutely not a cheap way to live. It can be. Right. But so could living in a house be a cheap way or living in an apartment be a cheap way. You can make this lifestyle as expensive or as frugal as you want to a degree because things will always happen that you will not plan for that, that you know, maintenance and things like that can always pop up and cost you some money. So you got to be able to figure out how are you going to financially support this lifestyle. For us, Sabrina's work is what drew us into the lifestyle so that we had it easy that part was already taken care of because we didn't have to think about this we knew where i was going to work what we were going to do we knew that we didn't have to actually really like struggle to find work or enter something that we're not used to entering you did okay so i'll say i knew <laughs> that we weren't going to have to do that kenny on the other hand on on my half of it it was completely different i had sold my business i couldn't take my business on the road <laughs> so for for me I had, oh man, I had all these ideas of what I would be able to do on the road. And the first couple of ideas that I had did not work out very well at all. Mm -hmm. It was uh, camp hosting, but we moved too often and we weren't in an area long enough. Like, sometimes we're only in a place for three days. Nobody's looking for help for three days. Good thing he's the bender and not the breaker. <laughs> <laughs> RV inspector. I went through the RV inspection class and thought I would uh, inspect RVs for people along the way on the road. But not only do we move often, we don't know where we'll be for your work the very next week. So if I, I was going to try to set up a inspection for somebody, say in Ohio, thinking that's where we're going, and then Sabrina comes to me and says, you know what, we're actually not going to Ohio anymore. Now we're going to Florida. It would just, it, that doesn't it work. stressed me out just trying to think about how I would try to schedule. So that didn't work. I got lucky in the fact that I met people that was in the marketing 
at the Winnebago rally and they, they liked me and my, they liked my personality and they liked Sabrina. Uh, so I do videos for Winnebago. I write for Winnebago. I do live presentations for Winnebago. I've done like Facebook lives where I've hosted events for them. So I, and I can do most of these things from anywhere and it fell into my lap and I got very, very lucky, but financially trying to uh, figure out what you're going to do for income. Uh, some, some people will work really, really, really hard before they go lots of overtime and they'll end up just saving up so that they know they have like a year yeah. or two years that they can go on the road. So we've, we've met other couples that'll do that and then they can figure it out as they go along. Yeah. And, and yeah, and have a buffer when you hit the road, have some type of emergency fund. Um, you don't have to decide how much that amount is, but you, you're going to hit areas that you're going to need repairs and, and things like that. It's just, it's just how it works with an RV. There's so much that goes into it. We'll get into the maintenance part of it in a little bit, but um, there's a lot to it. Have have a buffer, and uh, just just be smart about it. Really, just just be be realistic about it. <laughs> right, because I think your buffer should be more than you would buffer in a house. Yes, because this is a yeah. home that you take down the road <laughs> and you cause an earthquake in this thing every time you take it out and drive it somewhere. Number five is also another good question and it's a tough question can you say goodbye to your friends and family again this is if you are planning on traveling a decent amount of time but it's not just friends and family it's your trusted mechanic it's your doctor it's your hairstylist eyebrow place <laughs> nail place <laughs> gotta keep looking good while you're out on the road so you're, you're saying goodbye to these uh, bonds that you have made for a long time and, and people that you trust you you have a hard time finding somebody that she trusts to do her hair. I miss having the, our our local mechanic that I knew very well and knew that he wasn't going to rip me off. Uh, you know, when we're in these states and different cities, you don't know you don't know anybody. You don't you're even real, know if they're good at what they do. Yeah, you're really relying on reviews and th things like that. Uh, you might be used to seeing your parents or kids on a weekly basis, and now you're not going to have that anymore. It, it, Maybe you have family members that help watch your children if you have young children. Or or your pet. <laughs> so it's something, I, I bet you that's probably going to be one of the more difficult things for most people. And you might say to yourself, oh, I'm okay with that. I, I don't mind. They do. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> we hear. We hear they do. Yeah. And they will remind you how you <laughs> left them. <laughs> I'm serious. And I'm joking at the same time. But it's true. You, you will hear from family and say, oh, we miss you so much. We wish you didn't move into the RV. We wish you weren't traveling. We're, we're looking forward to you being done with this lifestyle so you're back in the area. Now for us, it we have family spread across everywhere uh, between Canada and America. So uh, for us, we feel like... We see them more. We see other family members more and other families less, less. Depending on where we are. Right. Uh, the good thing is people in the RV community and campgrounds are so friendly. You, you will be losing out on the the people that you grew up with and know but you're going to be making a lot of new friends and the other good thing is today's at time or age or whatever you want to call it being online and the social part of it instagram for us it's youtube you know our, our friends and family can watch our youtube videos and, and get a feel that uh that they're seeing what we're doing at least but we can facetime with your phone now and we feel like we do stay in touch and, and see our family still it, it's not exactly the same right but it, it really helps being able to do this face, you know, the FaceTime and the video chats and the texting. It's good. But for some people, that, that's going to be a big hurdle yeah, is huge. breaking those ties. But some people also use it the other way around where they use it to visit family. And yeah. it actually increases the time. Like maybe their grandkids live in another state and they go spend the summers in that state so they can spend more time with their grandkids. And mm -hmm. maybe they go back to whatever state they came from. And, and most likely, okay. too, when you're traveling like this, you're hitting cool destinations. And those cool destinations, you might be able to say, hey, send your nieces, send your nephew, your grandkids or, or family members. Come meet us. We're, we're going to be hitting uh, the Oregon coast or, or, or whatever it may be. It's that's a national monument or whatever the case may be. And people will want to hang out and, you know, stay with you. They, they want to see the RV, too. They And they'll enjoy the campground. We just had my parents visit us here at this campground. We had a great time. So question number six is maintenance. How will you handle day-to-day -day upkeep on the RV? Even if you travel a little bit or sitting still, I think there is maintenance going on with the RV. We, like I said, I, I know I already said, but we, we do about 30,000 miles a year on the RV. 
that is a lot of rocking and rolling, shaking and breaking. <laughs> yeah, I think I asked you the other day, do you think our RV can handle an earthquake in California if I worked in this certain area? Yeah, I said that it handles an earthquake every day. <laughs> every time we take it out, these roads are horrible. Everywhere we go, there's potholes. They're, they're just beating up. Construction is going on all over the place. You're, they're pushing you off into the shoulder areas to drive. Um, things will happen. I don't even know where to begin. I am doing maintenance and repairs weekly, I would say. And... Uh, not always big events, you know, not, nothing huge, usually just little stuff. You know, I'm, I'm cleaning up our slides and greasing our steps. I'm, I had to repair our steps. It's just, you know, you're, you're, she's, I, I don't even know. Uh, Sabrina has a better memory for this stuff. I have a better memory for it, but there's some things that I didn't even know he was doing. So I'll mention something. Somebody will say, oh, something about defrosting the refrigerator every so often. I was like, why don't we have to do that? He's like, because I do it. I have been doing we, it. We don't do it, but I do it. <laughs> I've done rewiring. These puck lights that are up in our ceiling are hardwired LEDs. And it's not just changing a bulb. you got to rewire. you got to take the light down, snip the wires, and rewire new lights in. It's not like it used to be where you just replace a bulb in them. That doesn't happen often or shouldn't happen often because they're LED and they last a long time. But this year had a bad run of bulbs, so we've replaced about four of them in the last two and a half years. So even beyond maintenance, as far as repairs, you mentioned the stairs, but other repairs. We got an extended warranty when we got the RV. Because Kenny does most of the repairs, we haven't used it as much as I thought we would, but it may be something that's very helpful for you if you, do, if you aren't mechanically inclined, like I'm not, or if you don't have some place convenient to bring it to. But keep in mind, so this goes back to that bend or break. We had an AC unit. Our AC completely shut down. I could not fix it. I, I tried to fix it myself. I always try to attempt to fix everything myself first. I could not get this AC to work. It turned out that it was a bad compressor, so I would have never been able to fix it myself. We have the extended warranty, so it was under warranty to replace. It took nine days to fix the AC. The dealer had to keep the RV for those nine days, and we were in a hotel for those nine days. That threw a major wrench in the way that we travel and the way that Sabrina has to go to work. So again, you know, if you're going on bend or you're, if you're going on break, these are things that, you know, this is our home. We moved, we had to move everything out of our RV for those nine days, pack it up into our car. I lost it, our keys. Lo yeah, we lost the keys to the RV during the, the packing up. We have a spare set, so no big deal. But, and then move, uh, we literally moved into a hotel for those nine days, which is fun too. Hotel out of pool. We have breakfast down. I mean. But then that brings you also back to finances but, again. Yeah. So for now funds. nine days, we're paying for a hotel. So the, the warranty covered a couple of the days. Three, days, three days or something like that. It doesn't cover nine days. So definitely some things to think about. I'm sure there are way more things to think about, but we think that these are the, the top ones to think about. If you have ideas, put them down in the comments so that other people watching this video can can see them. If you have questions for us, please do not hesitate to throw them down in the comments. We will do our best to answer them and uh, we will catch you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye guys. Thanks Bye. for watching.